so to know and here, uh, yeah turn that thing off for a second. okay so again a one you would be better with threes right but if you're using the one you just remember that the ink has to flow it has to be in the right spot you have to get it you know again if they puddle it up while you're tattooing and here's the other trick um i'm gonna i'm gonna do it on a piece of paper again all right get the get the marker see i can teach somebody how to tattoo without a tattoo machine that's I'm right you, like, that's right it's it's the technique is there and then you pick up the machine you don't pick the machine up first that comes later Okay, so just do a line, do a line on there. Okay, now do a line, but this time do small little circles. And do it the same width, but yeah, just small little circles. That's how you can tattoo with a one, one liner. And see, and because you're boom and doing those tight little circles to do a line, it's like uh, when you just poke it once, you get the one little dot. But when you do the tight little circle, you, you get a bigger dot, you know? So that's how you would work in with a one round. So, yeah, so, so this that's like doing a line with tight circles, but you can also do a line. What's the difference between this one, the foil and the Um, like Just different machines. Just, the book get the job done it's just if it's set up correctly yeah so it's if your machines are tuned correctly if you have the right combination of ink to your machine oh you're back me mm -hmm. you don't need to do that man i take it no 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 it's just i want some of the redness to start going away Oh, I get, I get red, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, I know. I can tell. That's why. My because beard, yeah, my, my beard's other, red. My other my, clients uh, were already be normal, and you're still red. I'm like, yeah. when is it going to go away? Hey, okay, guys. <laughs> Look how pale. <laughs> like, if I was any paler. Like, I'm waiting. If <laughs> and you still there? <laughs> if I was any paler, I'd look like the saran wrap right here, guys. So, it's going to be red. A tattoo, this redness. I get this question all the time, too. It's okay, right? He's not going too deep. He's not messing anything up. If I touch this tattoo right now, it would feel like my skin. It would not be raised. It would not be scarred. This is gonna heal like a sunburn, right? Like just a little bit of skin that's gonna flake off when it heals. So a little bit of redness, I'm a pale white guy. So, you know, you're gonna get a little redness, but if you see blood dripping down somebody's arm and then there's and it's scabby and you're you're digging like a trench with your needle and someone's skin like you're opening up like a hot dog i know it's funny video with the hot dog but i did it on purpose if you open that up like a hot dog somebody's skin that's exactly what it looks like you're doing too much damage I asked you. I asked you. If, if you could t okay so tattooing a hot dog I don't recommend it. I did that for a reason, just to show you too much damage will split the skin like like taking a knife to a hot dog. But don't tattoo hot dogs, man. I'm, I'm not telling you to do that. Bananas are will give you a false sense of security because the, the, no, no, but the, it takes the ink. So it's like, so where you would get shading or it would just go it's like if you were writing with a pen you should just write with a pen it's the same thing because it just takes the ink and skin will not work like you gotta work it into the skin you don't need to work it into a banana you know like that just helps you hold the machine get familiar with the machine but as far as skin and your artwork until you're in real skin, even pig skin is dead already. The real thing you want to look at when you're practicing and for doing your first tattoos is not how it looks right now, but how it heals and how it looks after it heals. What's funny, baby, is you get a lot redder than I do. Yeah, I know. I get, I get pink. This is a virgin arm right here. It will you deflowered, was. you deflowered my was. arm. That's true. But so, you know, I don't really so know. So it's like, I'm going to turn red. I've done a few. Yeah. <laughs> You know, 
So, yeah, guys, I finally, I finally got a tattoo on my right arm. So, it's a miracle. I let my nephew tattoo my leg. I tried to teach him, but I could tell no focus. No focus. You know, no focus. No, no learning. Hell how to no. Tattoo. If you contact me and you want to learn how to tattoo, I would, I would work with you. I will teach you. I will show you. But if you're all over the place and you don't listen and you got no focus, um, I'm, I just kind of like, okay, you're gonna do your own thing, so do your own thing, you know? Like, That's what don't I you do. hate when people ask you for I, uh, help I got, and then they're like, oh, I'm gonna do my own I thing. I got to the point. You know? I got to the yeah. point where I tell them, why are you bothering me, bro? Yeah, like I told you, I told you, don't color yet. Just work on your line work. And then then they send you tattoos of color. I'm like, why are you coloring? And I said, work on if your line work's crap. Why do you want good color? You know, what's the point? Yeah, I go as far as telling them that. A little rude, but straight up. Why are you wasting my time, bro? Oh. What do you mean, homie? I'm telling you not to do this, and yet you're doing it. Why yeah. are you wasting my time? Yeah, so you gotta do your own thing. Why are you wasting it, my time? It's not like I'm saying my way is the only way. No, but, but, but if you short, come no. to me and you want my help and I've been through the process and I know the process and I work with so many people and I know what works and I tell you what to do and then you turn you do around stupid and do stuff, now? then, um, you know, I'm not going to help you out. And I got to say this on, on camera live, you know, so everybody knows if you're not tattooing clean, and you're being dirty, I'm not gonna deal with you. The first thing, I will look at your first tattoos and I will tell you, you need a tattoo clean. And if you send me something else and I don't see barrier protection or you show me pictures in your bathroom or you know, like uh, you're not being safe, I will not deal with you either. But if you're safe and you do things correctly, I will, I will tell you anything you want to know. But if you're dirty, and I don't feel like you have the intention, and it's different from not knowing to not and just not caring. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, and I tell you, and you fix the problem, I will still help you. But if you just don't care about cleanliness, then I'm, I won't deal with you. I, I will tell you, like, look, you need to work on this. And if I don't see an improvement, then bye-bye, bye you know? But I, I have helped several people get in the shops. I wish I had a counter, like where every, every time somebody got into a shop because of Tattoo University, I could get a little ding, you know, a little bell would go off, ding, little counter, ding, in a shop, ding, in a shop. Ding, you know, it's like I've helped so many people get in the shops. I wish I could count it. So if you want to get into a shop, just do, just follow the plan. Like it's laid out for you. The walkway is there. Tattoo University is there. The YouTube videos are there. The people that help you are there. All you got to do is follow the plan and be clean. But if you don't follow the plan, you're just going to take the hard way. You know, it's, it's not even a strict plan. I tell you, I don't follow rules like doing the YouTube videos and stuff. You know, it's like you get hated on a lot for that. You know, I'm like, I don't care. I don't follow the rules. You don't fuck your rules. That's what I say to you. You know, it's like I do my own thing. So my rules aren't even like solid rules. They're just suggestions like, look, this works better than this. So maybe try that or this works better than that. So, maybe, you know, it's just like, hey. I found that I made the I took the machete and I cut the path. Now all you gotta do is walk the path. If you wanna walk in the weeds, then walk in That's the weeds. That's your shit, yeah. Oh, I forgot. I was gonna tell you a trick. I think I put this in uh, one of my videos, but. So this guy, yeah, that's why I started talking about the guys pulling their arms away from you and stuff mm -hmm. when you're trying to tattoo them. See how I'm open on this side over here? What I did, I just put them against the wall. So when they tried to scoot away from me, they just hit the wall. And then that way, like, I just held onto his arm and he couldn't scoot away from me. He had nowhere to go. That's a good you one know? right there. So just if they, if they keep pulling away from you, just put them, put their shoulder up against the wall. And they'll the try wall. to pull away from you, but they'll go this far. As far as their shoulder, their bones and their body will let them go. And they won't be able to go any further. Well, at least, at least you 
have a cool owner. Like not so many. I I had so many problems. He's never here. You know, in the shops. Um, here, here's what happened. Like, so I got into the shop, right? And I think like they were fucking with my equipment when I was gone. And not only like I think they were fucking with it, but I also think they were using it. You know, so then I would come in, like, so the, the supply guy would come in and I would order all the supplies I needed, right? You know, like popsicle sticks, you know, and, uh, like the, the mat aside and stuff like that, right? And then all of a sudden I'd come back and like half a bottle of mat aside, half a can of popsicle sticks, you know, it's like they, they were just lazy. So they would just like grab my, when they would run out, they would just grab my stuff, right? And then, you know, I went there because I wanted to learn more things, right? But like, they, they were telling me things like, oh, you can't line with a rotary machine. Oh, you can't, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It's like nonsense kind of stuff, you know? Like, and, and I had to pay 30% of everything I did. And they, and they weren't doing anything, you know? It's like, I wasn't learning anything. I'm like, why am I 30? Well, 30, I know 30% was good. Um, but but still I was like so I had an appointment one day I showed up and the and the owner never opened the shop so my client shows up and I'm locked out of the shop you know so you know what I did I didn't turn him away and I'm like okay I went and found a power supply I went and found a machine I had just enough equipment and that I could get the job done you know but I'm like why am I paying this dude to be locked out of the shop and to have him steal all my equipment and and this other dude want to fight me all the time and I was straight out of prison like he wanted to just show up like and just fight me for now and give me like shit face looks all day long you know so I'm like why am I why am I putting myself through this just to say that I'm here you know so uh, I mean the plan is just to get my own shit place like you were talking about and you know you don't need a lot of room you know you need like a closet size the only, space, the only you know? reason the only reason i would like a, si a good sensible uh, spot is if to you rent. get a lot of people well besides you get a lot of people because i would like to rent at least one, one or two places, yeah to be well and with me it's like and one of you know one of the reasons why i'm here is like i want to see other artists process you know i want to see how other artists tattoo right but but I like that one-on-one. -on -one. Do you need me to scooch a little bit? Is that no, you're good. Yeah, you're good right there. I hate when people move thinking it's better, and I'm like, why'd you move? But just tell me where you want me. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I like the one-on-one -on -one tattooing. Like, people, when they come to me, it's like, do you want a beer? Do you want, you know, like, here, relax. Like, do you want to listen to heaven? you want to watch a movie while we get tattooed? You know, it's like... Um, and I do that. I feed them lunch. I'm like, here, you want lunch? You know, it's like, um, it's it's kind of like a, a relaxing, just chill, get tattooed, fun experience. And a lot of times they just fall asleep while I'm tattooing on them. You know, it's like um, people don't believe that happens, but you know, like ten minutes into a tattoo, dude, and you hear this, like you're talking to them, and all of a sudden you hear this like sleeping and i'm like dude it's so relaxing to get tattooed like and people especially with coil machines that constant buzz is like a white noise that just puts people to sleep you know um so with me it's like i i want to work with other tattoo artists but i also feel like having that closed shop where like it's no like let's say you're tattooing somebody and it's, it's in a private spot you know or you know and like everybody walks into the shop and like, what are you doing? And they walk into your space and they invade your space. That's, uh, yeah, that's you know? the one thing I, yeah. I it's also doing, about uh, cleanliness too, you know? People, everybody walking in is not good. I was at a shop in, uh, in Mexico. 
Yeah. And uh, the wine shop in Mexico yeah. had a private room. And I, and yeah. Was, it wasn't private completely. But, but, but it, closed up. There, yeah, was, no door. there was no door. Things. But it was walls. Oh, come on, give me an example. This would be, like, the entrance would be on that side. Uh -huh. To this, where nobody can see the privacy of yeah. what's happening. Almost you know like a bathroom or something mm -hmm. where they just have no shop doors but walls. I honestly feel every shop needs to have that. Yeah, exactly. Because putting those curtains is not enough sometimes for the clients. Not all clients feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Um, so, so the reason why I want to do a, like a personal studio is for that reason. But the reason why I want other tattoo artists there is just so we can bounce ideas off each other and try new things, do crazy stuff, you know, those back tattoos where like six people are going at it at one time, you know, it's like, I, I want to push my limits, you know, and, and when you're doing everything by yourself, it's like, I mean, I still push myself, but... It's, it's so much quicker to have that person who can point you in the right direction. It is. Instead of, like me, it took me like five years to figure it out on my own. The people I'm helping, it takes them like one, man. Because That's what I've, I can I've tell given people, them everything you're I learned, you know? To help people to help because you know how long it took me to figure out that the mag is a lot better yeah. with, no, without a doubt than the round? Yeah. Well, it's and like so, five years. Yeah. I was doing ma the round shader. I would be here still probably doing the eye with the round shader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, for real, because kind of they're they're small, they're just round, they're not yeah. open, and they do more. I feel like they do they more do damage. more damage. Yeah, they so, do. They're, they're more packed. So you're damaging people, and you're trying to learn, but at the same time, it's like, well, I don't want to work on somebody because I'm damaging them. So I'm like, well, I'll just damage myself, you know, and like see what happens. Yeah, and I've done it, you know. But with tattoo machine tuning, when I started talking to people who knew what they were talking about, my mentor, he. Uh, he helped out a lot. He didn't. I didn't like the way he tuned them, but I learned from that. And in a short period of time, I learned a lot. What I would do was I would take the machine apart, put it together. If it worked, I would try to tattoo because sometimes I just put it together and it didn't work. And I like change it again. And every time I tried to tattoo, I ended up taking my machine apart again. So the way I learned was just trial and error. Like I tell you over a hundred times, one machine I've taken that thing apart and put it back together. I have super glue holding that thing together. I took it apart. It still works though, you know, cause I learned from it and I finally got it. That's what I'm saying. Like one day it just clicked like, oh, I get it now. Like I you know, don't even know for I know, what reason. I know exactly I, what you mean. Cause there was a time when I was about to quit actually two times. Oh dude, I've, I've about the, quit so but, many times. But one of the times that I was gonna quit uh, I don't know what happened. I got another job and I started doing it and then that shit started coming out nice. Yeah. Not as nice as now, but you know, it started better compared to then. But yeah, other than that, I was going to quit because I couldn't get it. Yeah. You know, all this, like, especially with the machine tuning, um, so hard, like, and you want to quit. I threw a couple of machines in the trash, you know, like they, they went out with the trash, you know, and then I, I made a machine. I only have a picture of it, my first machine I ever made, threw it away. So like, I'm like, damn it, I could have made that work now. You know, my very first machine I built, threw it in the garbage because I was, I had enough. I'm like, I'm done with this. I'm done with it. Throw everything in the garbage, you know, then you go out the next day and pull everything out. Cause you're like, Oh, I'm not done with this. You sound like you sound like when I started drawing. When yeah. I first started drawing, every drawing that would frustrate me, I would automatically just crumble up and throw it away. I burned them. I and burned now, paintings. You know. And now like, I'm at the at a stage where where am I in the phone? Where am I in? Yeah, like okay. it just makes sense. I think even if it comes out like crap, like you tried it, like the practice, and like uh, doing the practice, all of a sudden kicked it in somehow. Mm -hmm. you know? You know, people tell me like, I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna quit. I'm like, if it's meant for you, and well, like, or if you have the intestinal fortitude, you know, if like you stick with it, it'll work. But if you don't stay with it, yeah, you, you should quit because like, if, you, if you're not gonna stick with it, it's not gonna go anyway. It, Cause it takes years. You Many can tattoo years. easily, you can tattoo very easily. But to tattoo the right way is very hard. That's my that's my Buddha saying. Right? That's my Confucius. To tattoo is very easy. Repeat that again. To tattoo, everybody wants to hear it. It's very easy. To tattoo correctly, it's very hard. I just can't believe that people actually. 
So look how easy it is to tattoo. Put that in ink and stick it in your skin. And what happens? You get a tattoo. It's done. But if you want a tattoo to look nice and not stab somebody up and tear somebody up, you got to learn it, you know? So there's people out there just tattooing, just jacking people up. And, uh, you know, I feel, I feel like maybe the industry might be partly okay. to blame. I because there's it's nowhere freaking to go. Shows, there's it's no freaking shows are deceiving people. Yeah. Well, there's no schools that you can go to because the schools are a ripoff. But you people need to learn again. The reason why Tattoo University has its name, like you need to learn somewhere. You need to have like a school type environment where you can learn the right. Not a school that's ripping you off, but a school that teaches you the right way. Because mm -hmm. you know these schools are just here tattoo a banana. Your tattoo of fruit, and then give me five thousand dollars, and and then you're on the street with a some kind of fake tattoo diploma, you know. Oh, that brings up another point. So, even if a tattoo artist knows what they're doing, that doesn't mean they're a good teacher. Like teaching, exactly. And she had twenty years, but she does not know how to teach. Yeah, so you might be a good at tattoo artist, but maybe not a good mentor. So all these people say, and I've seen this, is just watch me, watch me. But what are they watching? Like, how do they know? Like the little needle down here with your hand in the way. How do you know what's going on? Yeah. And if you're not telling that person and walking them through the steps, people say like, oh, you're just saying simple stupid stuff but yeah but i'm walking you through the steps so you understand you know because all these tattoo videos were with the professionals and like oh you need to learn tattooing they speed it up they, the guys just tattooing they speed it up they might say one or two things and like they get a million views because they're famous but they didn't teach you jack they didn't teach you shit. You know? I, I mean that's fine I gone to so many videos it's not even funny they can't feed me yeah because I, i'm gonna tell you this is what i seen I have not seen uh, a very skilled artist show their, their work. I have seen like low skill. Yeah. I guess but what I'm trying to say. Away. I guess they, what I'm trying to say is I can't, the they can't feed me since I'm already at a different stage. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like it's just well, like for and beginners. nobody walks you through the beginner stage though. Everybody teaches the advanced stage, mm -hmm. and it's one technique for an advanced artist. So if you're trying to learn and you're not an advanced artist, then that video is just... It ain't for this you. Is, I just stopped watching videos because I'm like, they're all the same and they're not teaching me jack. You know, unless you find that one channel like uh, where they actually teach you something, you know, and I think a lot of the new channels have caught on to that. And that's what they're doing is like actually teaching instead of just doing a cutaway shot. Oh, here's the finished tattoo. Uh, you know, like, and they never explained what they did to get to that point. But, um, so just because you can tattoo doesn't mean you can teach people. True you know? And I just happen to have a background in, you know, education and, and teaching. So it's like, there you go. He's brilliant in all subjects. Not all subjects. I'm not brilliant in using an Apple computer. I was just gonna get there, bro. I was gonna say, bro. Just, um, um, yeah. Sorry, sorry, you Apple users out there. I, I suck at Apple. I can't. I can't get on with the whole app thing. I'm I'm old school. I want to download stuff, dude. And the app thing throws me off. The only apps I like are on my Android phone. So Android and. Yeah, and Windows. So I just broke everybody, all the Mac users' hearts out there, all the iPhone users. I'm sorry. The so, yeah, so here's here's for you, you and the view. Sorry, I'm slouching so you can. Okay, so if you want to shade over line, you don't want fat black lines in this because this is realistic. If you're doing a cartoony, said to you want big fat black lines right if you're doing realistic if this was a line sorry oh yeah, go ahead, i just jacked up the internet um so oh i guess everybody should see this too okay so you don't want a black line right under the chin because then it looks fake you need a shadow there 
So if you do a, a thin gray line or a blood line, or if you use a thinned out ink, a shade, and then come in with a darker shade, you can get rid of that outline. If you draw it in pencil, you do the outlines, but then you use the pencil to get rid of the outline. You, you don't dark, you don't do solid black outline. You do the outline and then you get rid of it using a darker shade. So, and some of the red is my skin turns red, right? So here's the thing, this is dark and this will heal really nicely and it'll stay dark, but it is not gonna be as dark. It will kind of lighten up a little bit, but if you tattoo at the right depth, it will stay like this. It will look exactly like this. But if you go too deep, the scab will actually pull that out. If you go too light, it will fall out. But, so when you're tattooing shading, you need to be conscious of that. Like, the redness, it's like the red mixing with the shadow. It's gonna kinda give you like, a, like a richer feel almost, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, and this comes with practice, but you, you kinda just have to trust yourself. When you're doing light colors like yellows and oranges and things like that, when you're doing real light shading, you, you need, if you keep working it, you kill the skin and it's gonna fall out. But if you're confident and you get it in there, you know that once that heals, it's, it's gonna stay the same. But you kind of have to get a feel for like, okay, do I need to darken this up? Do I need to lighten this up? I mean, like, you always look at your heel tattoo to see what to do on your next tattoo, right? And right now it looks like this, but you'd be lying to yourself, especially if it falls out and you're not going deep enough, that that's how that's gonna look. If you don't look at the heel process, you won't know. So this is why if you're new to tattooing, you tattoo friends and family because they don't go anywhere. Hopefully they might, they might get sick of your guts and, and leave, but you see them all the time. And I, I tell people who I tattoo, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna stare at you now. Every time I see you, I'm gonna stare at you because I wanna see what my tattoo healed. Years later, I'm staring at my tattoos, you know, because the healed process will tell you more than when you're finished. And now that you've been in the game for a while, you can start looking at tattoos five, 10, 15 years down the road to see how they have healed. Some of like this red tattoo right here is starting to fall out, but th that's when I was first learning too. So it stayed for a while, but also reds like to fall out, but it yeah, could also be my technique, but I can look since I tattoo everybody, oh, don't tattoo yourself. I'm sorry, dude, you can learn from that. Because look, now I can look at myself when the, the day before I die or the day I die and see how that tattoo came out. And I can see the longevity of it. The longevity of the tattoos, you know, that's the true test of time. And that, that's also why I go real dark, man. It's just because 20 years down the road when that person's sunbathing every day and surfing and, you know, like uh, spray tanning and smoking cigarettes and, you know, like, you can still like see that tattoo, you know. The pool is actually safer than the sauna or the spa, or wait, wait the spa, because I, it's the chlorine will kill everything, but you're not supposed to do it. So don't do it, but I'm telling you, don't go, what I'm saying is don't go in that damn sauna after you get a tattoo. It's so full of the germs and nastiness. Why, and why the hell would you do that? Like you will give yourself an infection. Sometimes it's not the tattoo process that gives you the infection. It's what, how you take care of it afterwards. Okay, not sure what Christopher Atwood is referring to. Is it's, that it's, sweet? Oh, that's sweet, what you're doing. Oh, oh thank you. Like you are sweet. tattooing Mike, hell yeah. It's like fire. That's what all exactly. the new kids say, it's fire. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like it's on fire. What's on fire? You know, I'm like, I'm like, what? it's the new language, What's bro. What's on fire, dude? You gotta, you gotta uh, keep like up someone, with the new language. Goes fire, and I'm like, where? Where's the fire? Well, when when they first told me about it's it, your fire, no, yeah. they told me you're a beast. I was like, no, I'm like, I started going off. 
I hear that. Said, and I'm like, I was drawing, yeah, I'm and he's, he's behind me, and he's telling me, man, you're a beast. And I'm like, man, I don't fucking like, know you. Who the fuck? And we went off, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But I guess that was supposed that's supposed to be like, like, hey, that's uh-huh. like the hey so I've never heard that so before. I was in the army right basic training you know kitchen duty I I hate kitchen duty right so I'm cussing up a storm oh, in the in the kitchen right so she can <laughs> so when I'm doing dishes I'm cussing up a storm she's seen it you know like so I'm cussing up a storm and this guy tells me like uh Dude, are you okay? You have Tourette's. I'm like, fuck you, man. And I'm like, what's Tourette's? <laughs> <laughs> and he told me, I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. I, I thought you were like saying something. I thought you were like calling me a name, you know? Like, I, okay, and I, I was 18 at the time. I didn't know better. Sorry, everybody out there. I know better now, but back then I didn't know better. So I thought it was saying something bad about me. We, he was my buddy too, so I'm like, why are you saying bad stuff about Good me? Shit. So I told him, I'm like, fuck you, and I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. I would prefer my husband to not curse. We're, we're limited, limited cursing. You know, your husband I do curse, there, I, need, I just I need, don't. I need to hang out with your husband and get the tears because I'm gonna tell you something, I'm the one that does the shit at home. <laughs> I'm doing the laundry, I'm doing this, and I'm yeah. doing that. I need to find out what he's doing, so we can, uh... Where, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't work, and my responsibility, and I don't mean this in a 1950s housewife way. <laughs> he goes to work, he works all day. Uh, my job is, I take care of the house, and I like it. I love to clean yeah. my house. Dude, I got, I like, five jobs, dude. I feel like you know, like... But I gotta do it. So I figure as long as he's off and he's working, you know, eight hours a day, I'll be for long. Oh. Well, that, I'll take care of the house. That's right. That's, that's eight hours official. I would, I would say like 12 hour days unofficial doing everything else that I do, you know? Yeah, so I get questions sometimes about cosmetic tattooing. So I'm, I'm dipping into that. I'm like, um, there's money there. Think I want to get into the eyebrows. Yeah, you got to think smart about tattooing. You got to hit the right audience you yeah know? there and, you go and you guys so i even thought about doing laser ta- uh, laser removal me too because think about okay everyone's like oh if you tattoo and you do laser removal it's because you're a bad tattoo artist no 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 no, no, no. fucking businessman man. Business man. exactly businessman and and why not have a one-stop place you had a bad tattoo you want to remove like why are if you tattoo, why can't you be an expert at all parts of tattooing, like removing tattoos as well. or eyebrow, you know, tattooing eyebrows? Like, you you should be well rounded. So, if they need to get it removed, why send them somewhere else? You know, like take care of business, get that money. You know, it's like you gotta hustle. You know, you can't. People who have no hustle and they tattoo, you're not making any. I'm sorry, sorry to break, burst your bubble. Like, you got no hustle, you're not gonna make it, man. Everything is about hustle, you know. Dude, I've been hustling for three years, and it's not gonna come easy either. Is you're gonna hustle for about three years, and you're gonna barely get anywhere. You're gonna hustle for another three years, and, and start making a little bit. You know, it's like it's good. It, you can't hustle for a year and think you're you're gonna get paid. You know, it's like takes time i tell people like baby steps you gotta sacrifice you know you gotta sacrifice you gotta and the more you sacrifice the more you want it so the more you want it the more people feel that thirst and the more they're like i'm i'm going to this guy you know yeah um so why not why not laser removal tattoos eyebrows you know clothing like everything piercing like yeah. Instead of sending somebody somewhere else, why not have it all in one spot? Just do it yourself. Yeah. That when I did have and it's so hard. I don't know around here, but it's so hard to keep like piercers around. You know, because they they kind of show up and they disappear. And everybody's calling me because I'm a tattoo artist. Like, do you know any piercers there? Are there? Do you pierce? Are there piercing around? I'm like. It's not my thing. I kind of wish it was because then I could be making money doing that too. You know? Some money right there. Uh, you know, so 
don't be closed minded I guess is where I'm going with this. It's like you know think think about you gotta you got like one of the things I think I'm starting to get good at is seeing where the opportunity is at. Like the missing piece like you if you're missing a piece to the puzzle and you jump in there and you fill in that piece, that's that's the key is finding that piece that everybody's missing, you know? Yeah. Okay, so the, let me let me explain behind it. And I didn't want to do this on the phone because I didn't want you to think I was mad. I just wanted to explain why. So your skin, like if you tattoo correctly, it still feels yes. like skin, right? That's a pretty brow. <laughs> but if you scab that area, that's like extra tissue that is now built up in that area, right? And and with this, if you keep like scarring someone's eyebrows and they keep going in for more, if this was scarred, see this, I actually have a scar right here. If it's, it's harder to tattoo that. So if you scar the area and try to tattoo it again, it just gets harder and harder. So it's like the idea behind a tattoo is that the skin is still alive so that it just heals over the ink and holds on to that. If you scar that up, so what you're doing, yeah, it's correct. It's it's taking the tattoo out because you're killing the skin to, to remove the tattoo. So when you tell me there's a solution to get help that come out, I'm like, well, all you have to do is kill the skin and it's gonna come out. So the solution just sounds like it's more painful or not even like, if I want to fall this, get this to fall out, I can just grab that needle, just dig it in like that drunk guy did, and just work it around until this this fell out. No. And I, and I read that thing you they sent you, and it's supposed to. So your needle, or you run a dry needle, it doesn't feel good, you know. So like the ink does kind of like lube the needle, and plus your needle gets caught in your skin. If, it's, if there's nothing on there sometimes, you know? So even if you're doing a bloodline, you dip in witch hazel, which, I mean, you might as well just try witch hazel when you're doing this, um, because then you don't have to mix anything, you just buy it. And, uh, and witch hazel is also an astringent, so what you're making is an astringent. So witch hazel, alcohol, they're all astringents, the alcohol might feel, not feel as good, so that what, that's why I wouldn't go that route. But